Hi guys, today we're going to do a little tutorial and it's about something that I believe is a bit of a misconception. It holds people back with the game of golf and how they learn golf because we associate this sport as being a static sport. And it's one of the things that's often commented by people who come for lessons. They can play all of the sports, but this sport is the one that they really struggle with. And I think a lot of us have this same problem. We experience this same issue. Um, and it's maybe the way that we perceive it. We think it's a static sport because the ball's static, but actually everything else is moving. And so if we shift our attention onto the moving parts, then actually we can start to organize our timing in a much more reactive way and start to tap into that innate response that we all recognize as being more efficient, that reactive state where our reflexes are actually helping us and in golf, I think sometimes our reflexes can be actually hindering us. They can be creating problems, particularly with the hit, because that's one of the first things that we focus on, looking at the golf ball and hitting the ball. But in order to hit the ball, we've got to strike it with the club head. And so our focus then becomes on the club head. And so swinging the club head to the ball can create potentially this kind of action, which may not be particularly functional as we start to increase our distance and develop our ability and our skill level to play the game and it's potentially holding us back as we get to a, a more advanced stage. It's a flip, it's this kind of action taking place here where the handle goes back and the club goes forward and it's like where does this come from because we don't have that in other sports, we don't have this kind of yip to our action but maybe it's how we've perceived the whole task, if you like, from day one. And we've looked at a ball and we've gone with the club head. It's not just about striking a golf ball and then wondering where it's going. It's actually the opposite. It's picturing the golf shot first, understanding the journey, and now we've got some context to how we want to actually swing the golf club. Because we know if we want to play a draw, we've got to swing the golf club with a path that is right of the club face. So the club face is rotating and the path's going to the right. We know that, but there's a lot of other contributory factors. Angle of attack and path are related to swing direction. And your swing direction is very much related to the orientation of your low point. And it's the low point of the golf swing that is absolutely critical. That is the key feature. Because that low point, by the way, is not static. Because as we move, the low point moves. And as we move faster, the low point moves faster. And I'm gonna explain how we can actually give ourselves more time in our golf swing. It's something that everybody who walks through the door asks for, they, I, I need more time because I, I wanna time the swing better, I want time to recognize the, where, how I'm moving and control the swing if you like, because this low point is gonna move around. And we've gotta time it. We've gotta time the club head to strike the golf ball when that low point is in just the right place for the golf shot we want. Because this club head is gonna strike the ball on the way to the low point, hopefully. It's with a low point before the ball, we either hit the ground or we can thin the ball and it's gonna play havoc. Let's focus on getting the low point for an iron in front of the golf ball. So we're getting a descending blow. Hi guys, just a quick message about our upcoming trip to Turkey. Uh, we've had two international trips already, uh, Turkey, last year, Abu Dhabi a couple of weeks ago. Fantastic successes. Looking forward to our next one, which is back in Turkey. We're so happy with that resort. We were blown away last time. The Gloria Resort, five star. It's five nights, four full days of coaching and playing with myself and the team. There's myself and Sam and George on the range coaching, short game, full swing, putting, and then on the golf course, there's Foz and Belty for the tour player experience. You get the chance to play, practice, spend time with us, first evening meet and greet, and then every evening we all eat together, breakfast together. It's a fully immersive week in the whole coaching system. I hope you can make it. It's the 26th of March, and we hope to see you there. There's 12 places, so please be quick. So we're just exploring how far we can move forward in front of the ball because as soon as you start to push the ground, guess what? This low point, look, starts coming back. It's over here. And as I start to push the ground and rotate, it's coming up and it's moving back as well. It's not just going vertically up, it's moving back towards me. 
especially when I've got the right hand on the club. So we've got a low point with that we need to move down in order to allow it to come up and that we need to move forward in order to allow it to come back. So we've got to go further forward and further down than we intend to when we're striking the golf ball. And we're often swinging to a golf ball, to a low point that is almost at the golf ball because we're focusing on striking the golf ball. We are making the golf ball our low point and our low point therefore is static. So we've looked at the vertical element, we've looked at the horizontal and now we're gonna look at the rotational. This element, this is a big component because this is really gonna influence your ability to draw and fade. It's gonna make life easier. What we're gonna do, particularly for a draw, is we're gonna give ourselves more rotation, more depth and more shift this way. We're gonna spiral, if you like. We're gonna rotate that low point clockwise out to the right as we go down. So the orientation of your body movement which the golf club is reacting to, is gonna create the delivery and release that's about to happen. We're moving through space in such a way, we are orientating this low point much further to the right, much further forward, much further down, ready for us to push, and it's gonna spiral up. And as it spirals up, it's probably gonna look something like this where We've angled it to the right, it's below the surface still, and it's still in front of the ball, even though it's moving up, moving back, and rotating back towards us. So as we release the golf club, we get the draw. How can we move in a way that's gonna orientate this? Well, think of throwing a ball. What I want you to do is take three balls, okay, and stand square and throw one to the right. I'm not gonna throw this against the wall, but if I was, facing down the driving range, I could let these go, in the back garden maybe. Just throw it, just three or four feet ahead of where maybe a golf ball might be in your stance. Stand square and throw a ball over there. And notice where you moved first. What was the first reaction? You went that way. So what you actually created was this. You actually created a swing direction with the torso. Notice as I throw, I'm now going up, I'm coming back and I'm rotating. I'm doing the opposite of what I did when I first reacted. My instant reaction was this. I went down to the right and forward. Now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna push, I'm gonna go back, up and round. That gives me the motion to release this in the direction I want. And then we can throw it over there. If I wanted to go straight ahead, remember the instant reaction. Straight away, look. Now, I'm here. Still tilted to the right, if you notice. Still rotated to the right, tilted down. I can feel my pressure, even my body weight. It's probably loaded a bit to the left, ready for me to then push, rotate. And as I'm rotating, I can now release this. If I wanted to throw the ball further left, instant reaction. I'm over here and then I'm going to really push and rotate and that's going to throw me even further round, back and up. So we've got a spiral up, we've got a spiral down and then back up again and we've got to time it. This is the moving target. So in a golf swing, because it's slightly different to throwing a ball because our left arm's attached to the handle too and the club's trailing, it's a little bit different than throwing because we can rotate and extend out here much easier. But there's similarities. The kinetic chain is very similar. But what we've got to do, we've got to orientate the body, if you like, more excessively than we'd imagine, than we'd expect. This is all imagination. So we're really tapping into your creative side, thinking about visual cues, if you like, which are imaginary cues of where we're going. So we've got to get the swing out here. And how do we do that? How are we going to get out there? Well, we know if we were throwing a ball, the first reaction would be this. And we can simulate that with a golf club. We can simulate it. You may have seen some of the videos that we've done, some of the lesson videos, where we've rolled a ball to somebody. And the first thing they do is move towards the ball, take a step, rotate. Look what they've done. They've created the conditions here to then push and move round, and it's moving that, it's spiraling the low point, it's bringing that arc round. So I want you to take a step. What I want you to do 
is I want you to imagine you're going to strike a ball over there. We can even put the ball in our stance here, in normal stance, bring the left foot back. So now I'm to the right of the ball, I'm behind the ball, so I'm bringing my lead foot back to my right. So it looks like this. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a step, but I'm going to take a step with the intention of hitting this golf ball to the right hand corner of the mat. Okay, so look at the orientation of the body now. This is quite extreme. So as I'm going forward, just like throwing, the club goes back. It's an exaggeration. We're getting the golf club and the body moving in two separate directions. And this is a good thing to experience for disassociation in your golf swing. So we're not moving everything together. We can actually tap into that sequencing. Okay, so you get a feeling for where you are now. Now take your normal stance, swing back and explore that movement you made when you took that step, but without making the step. So it's stepping without stepping. And this is the golf swing. We're shifting our weight, we're rotating, but we're not moving our feet around. We're not taking the step, but we're moving as if we're gonna take a step. And from here, you're all set to go. So we're feeling the rotation of the body, the drop and the shift, all within the motion. And it might feel quite excessive. If you've got a GRF board or a homemade version, so if you've not got a board, don't worry. I suggest you just get a piece of wood, lay it over a golf club, and then you've got a rocking board, you've got a teeter-totter. These are slightly different because we've got rails and we've got all the equipment to go with it, but you don't need that. What we do need is we need to recognize this lateral shift. So you'll have seen the wrecking ball action. If you've not, you can track back through the channel. You'll find the wrecking ball video, which demonstrates how we're shifting. Now, what goes back, what rotates and what goes up can shift back, rotate and go down, allowing us to bring that low point back. When we're shifting, we've got to be aware of the direction we're shifting. It's not just to the side. We are not just shifting from side to side. We've got to think about the horizontal direction of that shift. So we're going to go that way as per the throw, as per the step drill. We're going to feel the shift in this direction. I'm going to the corner of the mat. So if you're on the driving range, stand on the mat as normal and use that far corner as a guide. See the lead shoulder here? It's moving that way and it's dropped. It's even lower. So I know my low points below the ground. I know I'm twisted to the right and I'm in front of the golf ball. All the conditions we need ready to go vertical because they're all going to come back. But we're going to swing down and catch the ball before it's flipped to the other side. It's still going to be to the right because we've gone far enough to the right in the first place. So here, now we've created all the conditions, inviting the body into a release that it knows very well. Hit a baseball, playing a tennis shot. It's the same thing. We're reacting to that moving low point. The only difference with those sports is the low points in the air. So this is no different to tennis. This is no different to baseball. It's just that we're going through the ground. Now, from this perspective, we can play a few shots and we can see if it actually works. This is the proof in the pudding. So. We're gonna feel the movements we're making, the shift in this direction. We're throwing the ball this way. We're dropping, rotated, shifted. There's only one place this ball's gonna go. It might not be the perfect draw, might not be the perfect strike, but we've already got the odds in our favor that this is gonna draw. Something's got to go seriously wrong for this not to draw. And that's it, that's the draw. That's a nice, soft draw, strong fly. Same again, a bit more swing now, a bit tight that one. Getting a bit tight in my old age. Same again, draw. Bit more that time, but it doesn't really matter because I got the shape I wanted. I've got something I can work with. I've gone straight in with a five iron. I'm getting my golfers excuses in already. It's not my club. It's late in the day, it's cold. I'm 46 years old. 
got a bad knee. <laughs> Coaching all day, thanks Craig, yeah. And there's loads of excuses, but do you know what? We don't need them because we recognize the orientation of the form we created. The dynamism of our posture is so recognizable and we also recognize where we're going. Look at this, it's not over here. And why is it not over here? Because I've moved this way. Now I can push and rotate and extend. And it's throwing the club this way for the draw. Oh, that's a big one. Huge one. So I've got some feedback. Too much. Face was too rotated by impact. So now I'm going to just rotate it less. And there we go. Little draw. Yeah, the twirl to boot. So the regulation is underway. This is a refinement process we're under now. Of course, I can improve my movement, I can improve my technique, but I've already got now a starting point. That's all this is today. It's a starting point to build on. Fundamental starting point. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed that. Quite a lot of layers to this, a lot of information, but it all boils down to just self-awareness, developing that self-awareness. Not hitting ball after ball after ball, just stepping back, I'm going to think about what you're doing, doing a couple of exercises just to explore the space and the movement you're making through that space. Does it make sense to you? Are you moving in a way that you recognise for the shot you want to play? Because then we can take this to a golf shot. This is part of the pre-shot routine. We are walking towards the ball, having made a practice swing that matches the intention of our shot. And we're going to do this time and time and time again. And this is how we can get better at the game. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. And see you next time.